This is Anapalo City. It's located 30 miles east of Manila. It's a city of over half a million people. The streets are a network of alleyways with vendors selling fish, fruits, and vegetables. Jimmy's tricycles and walking are the forms of transportation. Just like all cities, Anapalo has trash and lots of it. Trash is in the streets and rivers. What garbage is collected is taken to the Anapalo City dump. The dump is home to one of the villages of Mission Love Seeds. Today, the mission is hosting food distribution and worship service. Small homes are scattered along the border of the dump. The conditions are extremely unsanitary, flies are everywhere, and the smell can take your breath. Before heading to the main village, though, we stop and talk with the mission family who physically lives in the dump. We ask them if it's possible to move. The village chairman says land is available to them outside the dump. Unfortunately, they do not have the money or materials to move. They said if, if they have uh, materials. materials to make the house, they transfer over there. Just on the other side of their home is Anapalo's garbage. Like many dump sites around the world, people who live in the dump work here too. These boys work several hours a day going through the trash for items they can reuse or sell. Even the plastic is reused and sold for two cents per kilogram. The main dump site village lies halfway down a mountain below the dump. Our mission team gathers to prepare for the hike down. An Apollo United Methodist Church arrives to join us. Mission Love Seas has partnered with the church to perform services twice a month in the mission villages. On top of the mountain you can see lakes and mountain ranges formed from the volcanic islands of the Philippines. Below in the valley are square patches of rice fields. It is about a 10 minute hike down to the village. Villagers must use this trail each day to get in and out of the village. Children also use this trail on their mile walk to school each day. Their homes are made of a patchwork of materials ranging from metal, wood, and bamboo. Most are only one room and 10 by 10 in size. Some have bamboo floors while others are just bare earth. There's no electricity, no running water, no sewer. Because of its location, this will be the least likely of places to find a worship service. If you think about it though, what a better place. On the side of a mountain, with breathtaking views, and it's quite peaceful. The villagers gather under a makeshift bamboo shelter to begin the service. Two candles and a cross are set on a table. Pastor Zusimo Mabuti presides over the service. <coughs> Four areas that we have, Damsite, Binayuyo, Admiral, as well as Pantai, they were there. At the, and we experienced the joy in fellowshipping together in the Lord. And right now, every second and fourth Saturday of the month, we are here teaching them the Word of God. And we are continually praying for them so that they will be nourished spiritually as well as uh, physically. Our mission group participates in the service. And we just pray that your light will shine through our hearts to others. Within your citadel. Though we have different languages, we all feel a common bond throughout the service. The watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because... During the service, it begins to rain. No one really seems to notice. A small bucket is placed to catch the runoff of fresh water. The shepherd will push the left behind sheep in order to follow the group. One of our mission's goals was to identify the water sources for each village. 
the uh, only morning that uh, the well is have uh, water. In the afternoon, there's no more. There's no Michael, a mission the team well member, tells me we must hike further down the mountain to a small spring. Villagers must go early in the morning because the spring dries up during the day. The hike is about 15 minutes, but I can see how toting two five-gallon jugs up and down would be tough. We reached the water source. It's nothing more than a small spring. Almost empty. It's a pew. This must supply the water for the entire dump site village. After observation, we discussed the possibility of making a small dam to pool the water and installing a pump to run the water back to the village. This will be homework for when we return home. Before leaving, we take water samples to bring back for testing. We learned from initial tests that the water was unsafe to drink and did carry some E. coli. Adults and children both drink from the water. During our medical clinics, many of the problems were related to unclean water. As we leave, we learn about the animals that frequent the water hole. You see? Cobra. You heard? Cobra, uh, cobra and uh, Philippine python snake. On our way back, we made up a new rule. Inform us about the dangerous animals before we head off into the jungle. Even though we're halfway around the world, simple things such as music and balloons bring everyone together. To show their appreciation, the villagers perform songs and dances. It's ironic that throughout the day we've forgotten that we're in a city dump. Smell, no water, no electricity. Just two candles and a cross in a small village, and suddenly the word church takes on a new meaning. Well, I think I, the message that I can, that I'm gonna give to the outside world, meaning outside the Philippines, is that wherever they are, they can share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in whatever ways they can do. Into the sun.